Alright, what's up guys? I'm uh, gonna be doing a Hunbat's Guide today. So yeah, I'm basically gonna go through all the important things about the god. Well, basically the basics to more expanded stuff. First, I'm gonna try to go through the abilities. Basically, Hunbat's 1 is pretty simple, you know. <clears throat> Obviously, it's just a jump, leap, escape. Main use of the ability is safety. But uh, like you wanna get in there, you know, it's pretty good follow-up off of your other abilities. It has a slow on it, so it's it's good to chase down and, and confirm auto attacks with, you know. Um, his two is pretty basic, just damage ability. It's his main like clear ability as well, and also a max first. But yeah, it's basically just the damage. They recently added knock immunity to it, so it gives a little survivability as well. But yeah, basically the damage is just for extra auto damage from your passive. Um, the three is a little more interesting ability. It's it's your secondary clear ability and and for like uh for the smalls by your your backs on solo side it's really good at clearing those because it'll double bounce uh creeps so for smalls it, it'll basically just one shot those but for these it'll double bounce also and then you can also use it an auto cancel an instant auto cancel also also it's it's uh I should go the cooldowns it's a uh, a teleport too so if if you spam the the button you can insta teleport to it. Um, if there's multiple gods around and you want to go to the first one, but if there's a lot of gods and, uh, maybe you're not set on going, you can just use it for poke and just let it kind of bounce so then you can decide whether to take the teleport last second or not. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty good as like a ranged poke and then kind of a threat. Uh, and then the ultimate is, uh, Hunbat's, you could argue, his strongest ability and, uh, pretty much what you play the god around. If people don't have bees and you ult them, they will kind of just die. Um, okay, it doesn't show on this, because... <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's pretty good at spreading out, like, fights and uh, targets that you want to go on. If there's a couple people grouped, it's really good and really strong. So, <clears throat> those are his main abilities, or those are his abilities. And then past that, you have uh, his passive, which is also one of the strongest things about him. Yeah, the passive basically just does extra damage for his autos after use abilities. So it's kind of just Hydra's built into the god. So you always want to weave in autos in between each ability. Oops, missed a jump, but, but you get what I mean, right? So you don't... I I if it's possible, like in 1v1s. <laughs> One day I'll hit the jump, but yeah. So ideally, you can... Uh, you want to weave into autos after every single ability, it's really hard when you're like, like I mentioned, three from range to just poke or whatever, you don't need it, but whenever you're committing, you do want to go for autos in between every single ability. So basically now into the mechanics of the god, I kind of mentioned a little bit with like his uh, Hanbat's three on, on camps, good to bounce back and forth, but yeah. Okay, going into the mechanics of the god, generally, it's pretty safe to lead with Blink Ults in teamfights once you find their carries. Um, so yeah, Blink Ulting is pretty safe. And then also Auto Ninja 2 is pretty safe too because there's a lot of chance that... Uh, most of the time when you Blink Ult, carries are going to use both Relics. Um, so it's good to Blink Ult 2 because you're not actually wasting your majority of your damage into their Aegis. Whereas your 3 is like really easy confirm, especially in 1v1s. It's pretty safe to blink ult 2, and they won't really be able to sit the damage. But you don't want them to Aegis your your auto 3 auto. That's like the big thing. That's where your all your Hunbat's burst comes from for the majority, and it's, and it's really fast too. Uh, especially if you end up having like Hydras in your build with your passive. It, it's it's most of Hunbat's damage, so... Your goal is basically not to get your 3 uh, aegis so that's why you don't want to stack it with your ult, in my opinion. If you don't have it on beads, then it's fine too. But uh, in general, if you can save your three, it, it is pretty strong because, like I said, I think it's one of his best abilities. So yeah, I'd lean more towards twoing off of your ult, but there's definitely times where threeing's better. But yeah, past that, just tossing up the three on tanks to maybe get to their back line. You can use that to get there if you don't have blink up or. Uh, if you're really confident, you could jump in, but I'd, I'd basically in every fight I'd save my jump for uh, the end of the fights to see if you want to go aggressive or defensive after. But yeah, but basically blink ulting, and then you kind of assess from there whether you want to commit with your abilities or jump out instantly to get relics. Uh, 
is the majority of how you play the god. So I guess we can go into Hunbat's build. Um, generally, the start, I think, will always just be this. Bumba's plus uh, Mace. You can kind of just... I, I think Crusher's one of his best items if you can go it. But a lot of times you need Brawlers. So you kind of can't always have the luxury of Crusher. I think if you can, you go Crusher into Transcendence. Trans just really good scaling with his passive, and in general, Hanbat has really good scaling overall. I think Trans is pretty important on him. I, honestly, I think Trans is really good in general. I think this build will be good on most gods. I've been liking Titan's third because I think uh, it's just really strong right now, and with the increase to base like Prots uh, on 9.5, I think it's actually pretty good to go third, and you have a lot of damage with these two items already. Basically, <clears throat> I, I think you're kind of just considering between... Heartseeker or Hydras for this uh, fourth slot, or I, I guess like you could have this as be Brawlers too, right? If you think you need it later, didn't have to go earlier, could be Brawlers, or then generally this will be it. So, so the last spot in the yeah yeah Brawlers, if you think you need Anti Healing, I think you always go Bumba Spear. Bumba's Hammer, I think, is not that great. If you just want to play around your ults, Bumba's Hammer is okay to get a uh, shorter ult. And then the last item, I basically just think is between Heartseeker and Hydras. Hydras is really good because it's additive with your passive, so your autos are just hitting really hard off of your abilities. Um, but Heartseeker is also just a really good item, and with all the health being built in the game, the pass is really strong right now. And also, Hunbat's ult, you very easily hit like multiple people, same with your two if they're grouped, so, and same with your three. So obviously, basically any scenario you're not auto-canceling, <clears throat> the Heartseeker is better, so maybe you want to play for 1v1s, I would recommend Hydras in that case, and if you want to play for more group team fights, I would recommend Heartseeker. Okay, um, so now I think I want to go into general strengths and weaknesses of Hunbats. Basically, Hunbats is pretty weak pre-5. Without your ult, the god is kind of hard to fight maybe not impossible to play with if you have really strong mid laners or, or other laners like you could find some ganks but it's not really where you want to be i think generally you want to farm until you're five and make sure you're in a good spot uh like not sacrificing farm for ganks you know and then even once you're five i don't know if you instantly want to fight i think basically once you get your first item you're you're, you're quite strong but there's a chance that once just having your ult is enough to fight if if other people on your team are strong but it's really not necessary at all. Hanbat's, <clears throat> like I mentioned earlier, he scales really well. That's why you have items like Transcendence and just full power. So the later the game goes, the better for you. Um, so it's not bad if it's just a farming game. Hanbat's really is only getting stronger. Uh, but yeah, outside of that, I think you should avoid fights for the most part when your ult's down, because the god generally just re revolves around his ult and he's like infinitely strong without it there's definitely some fight potential especially later on without it without his ultimate with auto cancel you can kind of just one shot people all right this is a little, little scuffed because it's a neat bot um but yeah hunbat's late game is really strong and just with your abilities you have the potential to one shot people if you blink three uh into auto cancels or even jumping into auto cancels is pretty good, assuming like relics are down and you just traded all your ult for all the relics. If you find like a 1v1, you definitely can one shot. So, so later on, it's less necessary as the game progresses. But generally, I would try to fight whenever your ult's up, and other than that, try to keep farming because you're just scaling. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go into his good and bad matchup or jungle matchups. I think it's too hard to say matchups outside of just roll jungle is a little weird where like every roll kind of de is dependent for matchups because you're going to be diving later on ganking so, so matchups are pretty de reliant on everything as a jungler in general but luckily for hunbats he's pretty good into most things and he doesn't actually get countered by too much he's he's a really consistent god that you can pick in most scenarios you know um but if for jungle matchups specifically i think i would say that dodgy is one of his worst ones um robin can also be a little bit weird but for the most part it's not that big of a deal i'd say what, what can be bad for hunbats is when people can immune ult really easily and that's why i think dodgy can be bad because if you ult the dodgy dodgy can just ult it and then you're not even getting the 
combat's ult damage, which is actually pretty noticeable. She just completely immunes it, except for like one tick of the ult, you know? So, <clears throat> yeah, most gods that can just immune your ult damage, I think your matchup's not ideal, but you can still make it work. And that's why I say Robin, because you can easily two or ult it most scenarios. But outside of that, I think most matchups are pretty winnable in the 1v1. I guess like Nemesis is a pretty good 1v1 god, but but generally Humbats is really, really good in his 1v1s, like late game 1v1s, because of his auto cancels and just his scaling. He, he just kind of slams damage. And yeah, I, I'm just going to go into his team fights real quick. Basically, I mentioned with his ult, you can... You, you can kind of use it to spread team fights, and you have the option to either ult aggressively or defensively in fights. If uh, you think it's really hard to dive their carries, they're really safe, I would just kind of ult to push them out while you're ulting the frontliners in, and you're just kind of spreading the fight, right? The carries, maybe you have to use relics to get through to, to help their frontliners. Um, or you could do the vice versa when you're diving carries. Uh, put the ult in a position where you're kind of pushing the frontliners away, stopping peel, which is why Hunbats can be good into a, a random god like Kepri, you know, if he's grouped on his carries, it's hard for him to peel without beads, but yet yeah, generally it's good to try to break up the team fight with the ult. Sometimes the carries are just grouped, and maybe the front line's not around it. You, getting a good ult on the both carries is always pretty impactful. Maybe you can't always commit to it, you have to go jump out after, but yeah. You're kind of trying to uh, Hunbats has the option to play dive or or not, so so you're your options are really open, as well as, like I mentioned, his 1v1s are quite good. So even if fights just aren't going well, maybe your team do doesn't have good team fighters overall, you do have the option to go seek out 1v1s uh, in most scenarios. Maybe, like I mentioned, Daji or Nemesis could be a little awkward, same with Ravana, but you still do have the potential, if you can catch them off guard with your ult, to win them really easily. Uh, other than that, you can kind of use your 3 and 2 to poke, maybe... Maybe, uh, like I mentioned before, you can toss your three out on some frontliners. The poke's pretty significant, and maybe if it ends up on a backliner, you can TP in and ult, ult get a big ult when they're grouped. Uh, but if not, you can just keep the poke, and, and it's just kind of the threat of TP in, you know? But yeah, I would look to blink ult as the general start of fights, and then you kind of um, just kind of assess the situation and then see <clears throat> whether you would like to continue for going aggressive or, or peel back and be more defensive so that's the hanbats guide uh let me know if you think i missed anything what uh, other gods you want me to do a guide on or yeah how you like the video thanks for watching appreciate it